welcome flip clock fans this is a uh, sort of a different video um, it's not exactly live although I am using a live mic and a lot of times I'll record uh, separately and do voiceover so this is it's not a voiceover um, so you're gonna hear some ambient sounds you might hear my family walk in and start talking to me you're gonna hear clocks ticking and clocks flipping because we have several clocks around here the ticking one is actually a Seth Thomas wall clock. It actually ticks. Anyways, what what this video is about is I want to go through what makes a flip clock work. And this is, I did one of these, oh, years ago, but that was very basic. I'm actually going to take one of these apart right here in front of you and, and explain how does this work. How can this thing here know what time it is? And how does this little motor run this whole show? So that's what we're going to look at today. So we've already got one of these clocks apart and this is a Copal um, 227 flip clock now uh, some flip clocks are going to be different than this they're they're going to have different ways of working so that's just the way it is this isn't all inclusive we're going to look at this together now th so obviously what does it take it takes flip tiles and of course these are numbers one half on each side they're in a spindle we're going to take these out and get a closer look at them it's going to need uh, holdbacks, tile holdbacks. I also call these tines. Uh, they're called resting fingers. Uh, I always think that's funny. You'll need one of these doohickeys. This is a spring. And this spring here, of course, what it does is it's going to hold back that last digit until it flips 0, 0. So the, digits, the last digit of 4 has already dropped. And this is going to make sure that it doesn't drop completely because of that expansion over there until it goes to zero zero and that's how that and these work now we're gonna get in more detail about how this little motor translates single spinning motion to be able to do hours and minutes now a little um, you know advanced notice here some clocks I believe have minutes that actually run the hours these two run independently so the hours and minutes on this clock are geared um, sort of independently uh, they're they're tied in together but you're going to see what i'm talking about here in a second so the first thing is i'll just take this motor off real quick it's just a matter of taking a couple nuts off so how does a flip clock work well this is the magic right here this is the amazing device that the Japanese invented for their flip clocks. They call it the Copal 2. It basically just spins. And a lot of people think there's uh, there's bearings in here. They see in there think that's mechanics and it's nothing. This is just a post. It's just a it's it's just a spinning cap on a post. That's it. That's all that turns. A lot of people are imagining more than that's in there. All that stuff in there is part of a cage. This is one that I've tore into. So this is the cage. And I've pulled back some of these things so you can see the windings. None of that turns. Nothing turns here. I've punched out the bushings here that go in here. So that's missing. There's bushings, a little circular thing. That's for another video at another time. So anyway, so what's happening inside of here? Well, that's a gear case. So inside of there or something sort of like this. This is off a different clock to where it's taken the motion, the simple motion of the turn here, and gearing it so that it, it has enough force to actually move the clock. In this case, this will be this one here. So it's gearing it so it has enough motion to move the clock. Now that, that'll gear that down to a certain rate of spin, and the, and the gearing here has to take that into account. There's a lot of mathematics going on here. So the thing is, this thing here contacts this wheel right here. And that wheel turning there, as you can see, turns the minutes directly. But indirectly, through this gear, it comes down through this gear and then back up through this gear. It's turning the hours at the same time. So the one spin rate that impacts here is geared down so that it, it goes, it'll make a full turn here every 24 hours. This one every 60 minutes, this will make a full turn. So that's pretty much it in a nutshell, but we're going to look at it a little more closely. This is a simple E-clip here that holds this on.
and then there's a little washer that always wants to get in the way there okay so we'll need that okay so this this device here how this works is you'll see right now it's set to go on this is a switch that when the switch is pressed the alarm is off so it's opposite of a normal switch you'll see this move over let's see if I can get there that turns the alarm on that's the alarm off turns it off then it wouldn't go off anyway even though it does click so once that clicks that turns the alarm on now how does that work well so here's this coming off all that clickety clacking you heard just a minute ago see there's ridges in here it looks like a gear it's not really a gear all that is is it touches this little device it's on a spring its job is just to control the motion so it only goes one direction and it makes that rubbing sound the clicking sound so you see here it's got some ramps those ramps will drop into those holes whenever it's time to go off and that will when it does that it moves this forward which moves this lever right here and allows the alarm to go off this spring of course keeps that pushed up against there now this device right here that's not supposed to be there it's supposed to be sprung back and held up against the um, wheel there this right here is set exactly to whatever time it is so this will turn once every 24 hours and that's done through this turning here it's going to in touch in these minutes so when this turns the minutes turn that takes some motion here translates it here then translates it back to here so that every 24 hours is turned so what this has to be put on exactly where you took it off now there's ways to to learn how to do that exactly now what i can do and this one happens to be set well that's a long story you can mark it somehow you know say okay when this when this post is exactly here and you can make a mark um I can go into detail later exactly how to reset this because once you take this off once you disengage this wheel from that gear now you're screwed so now that alarm won't work I just messed it up the other thing is sometimes I might think I've got it set right to where okay there it is 7 p.m. but in fact you got to turn all the way around now that's 7 actually this will be 7 a.m. so anyway that's that's another discussion but this wheel right here is what determines when this gets pushed into here all right so this just comes off that's just translating that motion to that wheel now things start getting buggy normally this motor is touching here and when it's holding here and you try to set the time the only way it can move is by moving this ratcheting slip slip clutch there now when that when the motor's not connected the whole thing turns so that's not natural normally you're going to hear that clicking noise and that's that ratcheting slip clutch because this thing will not move just because i'm moving this wheel it won't move that won't move unless it's moved by the gearing through here okay so what do we've got we've got another clip that needs to come off here this little device has an indention to match this post or a flat spot to match this post because as this post post turns as this turns here by the motor as it spins you want this to spin right with this and that is going to translate motion right to this spindle we'll call it this set of wheels of tiles so again another flea clip and another washer then you'll see this thing will come right out there now it does have a flat spot so it's going to turn with the with the post here those two indentions fit right into this spindle and you'll see that in a second that spins this so that connection there those two little things spins this whole thing might as well get this off here now I've, I've uh, crimped this because that came splayed so I'm gonna go ahead I can go ahead and easily take that off I said easily take it off okay so it's off now nothing's there's nothing stopping this from being pulled out once I pull this out that disengaged this minute wheel 
from this hour gear train. So you can actually screw things up by just turning it a little bit. So again, we'll go ahead and just pull this out and that will release the minutes. It'll also release this. This is the, okay, there. Now we should be able to get this spindle out here. There it is. That comes out, the wheels here. You see that, that place there, that's where this, this thing here locks in. That turns the minutes. Now, what just fell out was our little tile uh, hour hold back until the last minute drops. It's just a spring device. It also serves as a spacer between the two wheels, this little part right here. And then this is secured in the back somewhere so it kind of stays in the right place. It's very flimsy. Now, this comes off. This is your hours. Now, how, how do they spin separately? There you go. You've got another one of these. And if you look... We'll go ahead and take this all the way out. See this gear right here? It has those indentions. It has the indentions that are going to catch the hours. And based on how this spins, will move the hour wheel. It's so like I said, it's sort of independent of the minute. The minutes aren't moving the hours, but the same gear is. So that's how it works. And it's i say every clock's a little bit different there's a lot of things that can go wrong i've had people talk about uh, the numbers aren't um, aligned or the hours not flipping right uh, and that has to come the hours not flipping right has to come down to this it has to be lined up exactly with this now there's a way to fix that that's probably beyond where i wanted to take this video there's a way to fix that you have to unloosen everything and then make some adjustments with how this gear here this metal gear impacts this gear and you'll get it you can get it set right and it's the same thing with this situation over here when we get this put back together how this is set impacts when that time's going to go off so once you start messing with these clocks you've opened up a whole bunch of fun because you got to get things back in the right order just consider it a puzzle take your time it's not that bad you'll eventually get it don't force things, don't push things, don't strain things trying to get the wheels together. That's not how you do it. So I hope this helps somebody. It's just something to me that's very interesting. I had this clock apart and I thought, well, that'd be a good time to kind of go through that. The actual way the motor works, I believe that's very interesting. A lot, again, and why, why oiling it works and how that works. Uh, if there's enough interest, I would make a video on, on that because I did tear one of these apart, as you saw. And I went into detail how, how dropping some oil down in there will work. Anyway, I hope this was fun uh, for you guys if, and it kind of spurs your imagination on what you might be able to do uh, to fix your clocks. Keep Take pictures when you take a clock apart. For example, this video itself, if I got in a bind, okay, which, which washer went where and what was the order and something's wrong, oh yeah, I forgot that spring. Um, you know, you'll be surprised at how taking a video or pictures will make your life a lot easier. Where is that spring? Okay, there it is. All right. Well, thanks for watching. Have a good day.